Well, good evening there and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are in a very dark part, one of the darkest parts uh, of the Netherlands and we are hoping to shoot one of the most underrated parts of the Milky Way, in my opinion. So, uh, why am I ducking here, by the way? Well, we are at the highest cliffs of the Netherlands. <laughs> they are called the Cliffs of Wierum and they're about this high, but hey, let's see if we can make a composition with it. most underrated part of the Milky Way, in my opinion. We are talking about the Milky Way region, the pretty faint but still beautiful Milky Way region, which goes through the constellations of Cassiopeia and Cepheus, for, for example. Sickness will also be very low on the horizon, but barely noticeable, I think, because of the atmosphere. Um, Around Cassiopeia you have the beautiful H-Alpha uh, nebulae, uh, the Heart and Soul nebula. And in the constellation of Cepheus we have a beautiful H-Alpha uh, nebula also, uh, which is called the Elephant's Trunk, made famous by the Hubble telescope. And uh, yeah, it is pretty faint as I said. That's also why we are in the northeast uh, of the Netherlands. We are in, uh, at the Wadden Sea coast and we're looking to the north-northwest over the Wadden Sea, which is one of the darkest regions. So we hope uh, that helps us to get some detail out of the dust lanes. Right before here I've shot uh, a bit of zodiacal light, at least I tried to with the Cliffs of Wierum. <laughs> I don't know if it came out pretty well, but uh, it was a bit, uh, a bit rush, rushed, but I don't really care because my goal is tonight just to enjoy the darkness, the sky, the stars and um, hopefully also a bit Martijn's company. Martijn is also with me, he's uh, somewhere else here uh, at the Wadden Sea, standing in the mud probably. I brought uh, wellies or gumboots, it uh, depends uh, which part in the world you live in, how you call them. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll uh, walk a bit into the sea, but we'll have to be very, very careful because the tide is coming in. So we don't want to get stuck here. So uh, let's enjoy the night. Now what is that zodiacal light I mentioned? It can be seen as a cone of light in the night sky as the sun is reflecting particles of a dust cloud in our solar system. It is thought to originate from passing comets. The zodiacal light follows the ecliptic, the path the sun and planets are in. It is best visible around the equinoxes, which we are in right now, just after sunset or before dawn when the ecliptic makes its largest angle with the horizon. So it always seems that uh, we are in a hurry during these astro shoots. So uh, I've just shot a foreground. Uh, it's uh, pretty basic, but I like it. Maybe you can see it uh, behind me there. There are some old uh, storm breakers uh, leading into uh, yeah, where the Milky Way is intersecting the horizon at a uh, sort of angle. There are actually two storm breakers. I've also managed to uh, yeah, uh, get some yeah, lines from the water, uh, from the from the low tide, uh, which uh, kind of complements the Milky Way shape, I hope. But suddenly there is only about half an hour left before the moon comes up. So I really, really want a track shot because yeah, the Milky Way is so nice here. So I'm just now talking, setting this up in the meantime. I might shut you off again so that I can get my tracker running and then I'll make some more B-roll and see what comes out. But uh, yeah, half an hour left. Pretty rushed, but still very, very beautiful. There we can see Orion setting, beautiful sight, some lighthouses on the horizon. I really love the Dutch coast, man. Shooting over sea is always the most dark option you have. Beautiful. Oh. 
All right, so exactly, of course, when we are pressed for time, my remote shutter release is having issues. Uh, it, can, it only fires one shot at a time, uh, and it took about 15 minutes before I figured that out, uh, obviously. <laughs> so that means we will end up with, I think, five or six tracked shots, which isn't the end of the world. Um, because it's so dark here, I think it will come out pretty well still. Um, I'm shooting, by the way, at ISO 1600 20 mm lens f2.8 in uh, a one and a half minute exposure time. I had to think about that, and it comes out pretty well. The histogram is more or less in the middle. Um, we have about two minutes before the moon rises. Um, this might be one of the darkest places in the Netherlands, so I really want to check out what the sky quality will be here. I'll point it a little bit back where I'm shooting right now. And um, yeah, let's see uh, what it gives me. <laughs> Twenty point five. I expected a little bit more, but I'll put off that light, and uh, yeah, we'll see uh, how we um, yeah how it measures. Uh, it doesn't matter what it measures, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's so dark here. We can see the Cassiopeia region uh, with our naked eye. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So uh, whatever this says, I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, it's a little bit better with, uh, with the light off. 20.85 I'm getting here. I uh, expected a little bit more, to be honest, but uh, yeah, you know, that's uh, how light pollution moves on. <laughs> so a little bit of background info uh, when I did my last measurements of the sky quality. The moon might have uh, risen already there for 5 to 10 minutes maybe. I didn't see it, uh, but I definitely noticed it on, my, uh, on the sky brightening on my last couple of tracked shots. Uh, we were standing uh, right here uh, near Virum and in 2015 it measured 21.6. Uh, we're now 10 years later of course, but it still looked very 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 dark and in my experience uh, remembering what we saw it yeah, should have measured around 21 point something uh, before moonrise I think so it doesn't really matter but just some background information so while you are looking at uh, the storm breaker can you see it this is more or less uh, the composition I've shot. Uh, the moon is rising right now. I uh, have had some issues technically uh, tonight. Um, technically with my shutter release, it only seemed to fire one in two shots. But hey, that isn't the end of the world in such a dark place. 20.8-ish uh, uh, on the SQM meter, the sky quality meter. Um, yeah, I haven't seen Martijn the whole night to be honest, we just uh, chose to go another site and uh, yeah, uh, let's see what we can get. Uh, I'm really curious what Martijn has shot also, I think uh, he shot a lot more than me because I was trying to film, I was trying to shoot the zodiacal light, uh, uh, enjoying uh, these, inc these incredibly dark skies also, which also takes some time and it is okay I think that it takes some time. Uh, you need yeah, to stand still sometimes and just look at the stars and you know photos are just photos. Uh, video is also memory but uh, what you remember yourself is maybe even much more important than photos and videos. Um, anyway, it was a mix of everything uh, a little bit. Um, yeah, beautiful. I might have seen uh, Orion uh, for the last time this year also. It's uh, yeah, setting there uh, into the, uh, yeah, what is it? into the west. <laughs> yeah, furthermore, uh, yeah, what, uh, what else can I say? Uh, if our shots turn out to be any good, here are our shots. Uh, for now, I thank you again for watching and I hope I'll see you on the next one. Maybe, and I, I hope, at least a little bit less chaotic and a little bit more film. But uh, yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. <laughs> see you around. <laughs>